T-minus 1 minute 45 seconds. The computer will automatically verify the readiness of the main engines at the T-minus 1 minute point. Coming up on the 90-second point in our countdown, T-minus 1 minute 30 seconds and counting. Everything going smoothly here at the Kennedy Space Center and waiting for the beginning of the flight of STS-7. T-minus 1 minute 15 seconds and the liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. T-minus one minute, and the firing system for the sounds of propane system on the pad is armed. T-minus 55, the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices are used to ensure that hydrogen flowing through the engines uh, does not accumulate, uh, causing a small explosion and pulse or pressure pulse at engine ignition. This is the seventh flight of a shuttle, five by the shuttle seconds. Columbia, and this will be the second by the shuttle Challenger. To the onboard computer. 30 seconds to go. We've gone for auto sequence start. T minus 25 seconds and counting. The sequencer on board now controlling the final seconds. T minus 17 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed breaker in launch position. T minus 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, we go for main engine start. We have main engine start and ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Beautiful, beautiful. Houston now controlling, mission control confirms roll maneuver starting. are being throttled back because of the high aerodynamic pressures. Plus, it looks like a perfect launch. The first American woman astronaut is on her way to space. Engines are be being throttled up at this point. At uh, this time, the, the crew is basically just along for the ride. Uh, things smooth out quite a bit uh, once SRV separation is taking place. And they are riding upside down. That's correct. With the view of the uh, horizon, otherwise you wouldn't have that. Mark, one minute, 40 seconds. Challenger now, 16 nautical miles in altitude, 13 nautical miles downrange. Grip and Halk and co Company. Now coming into the last traces of the Earth's atmosphere, Challenger now 19 nautical miles in altitude. About 10 seconds from the separation of those solid seconds. rocket Challenger boosters. Challenger 21 nautical miles in altitude, 21 nautical miles downrange. Standing by now for solid rocket booster separation. They will fall back. There they go. Roger, set. 12 minutes, 12 seconds. Confirm good solid rocket booster separation. Uh, the booster's falling away now. The boosters will fall into the Atlantic Ocean about Two minutes, 20 seconds. 180 miles. Challenger Houston, your first stage performance was nominal. Good news. Nominal first stage. That was Capcom Roy Bridges advising first stage performance. Onboard guidance is converging now as program. Challenger is now steering for a precise window in space for main engine shutdown. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Challenger 35 nautical miles in altitude. Standing by now for two engine towel capability. Two-engine towel means that they could lose an engine now and still be able to make a, a, a landing at uh, Dakar, Senegal. That would be an emergency landing. That would be an emergency towel landing. Capability. Right? Roger, two-engine towel. Okay. Mark, three minutes. That call up by Capcom Roy Bridges says the Challenger now has landing capability at Dakar Airport should one engine go out. Mark, three minutes, ten 
12 seconds. Challengers three main engines continue to run smoothly. Challengers five person crew really moving out now. Velocity now reading 7,200 feet per second. A perfect launch. The crew gets so used to to uh, doing non-nominal simulations that uh, probably this launch seems very boring because they have very little to do other than monitor the, the instruments. I can't believe it would be a boring launch. Well, it's not exactly boring. Three minutes, 40 seconds. Challenger 48 nautical miles in altitude, 105 nautical miles down at range. Standing by now for negative return call up by Capcom Roy Bridges. Challenger, Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. Three minutes, 57 seconds. With that call up, Crippen, Hauk, Ride, Fabian, Fagard, uh, committed to space travel. Roger that. Miko on your screen is main engine cutoff, and at that time, the shuttle Four will be in space, seconds. but it the, won't uh, yet be in orbit. The operator has been activated to provide cooling for Challenger. And we got a press to Miko call, which means that uh, no abort will be selected prior Four to main engine cutoff seconds. at this point. Challenger now 54 nautical miles in altitude, 155 nautical miles down range. Already 9,500 feet per second. Mark, 4 minutes, 35 seconds, Challenger, 55 nautical miles in altitude, 174 nautical miles down range, velocity now reading 10,000 feet per second. Four minutes, 50 seconds, Challenger, 56 nautical miles in altitude, 196 nautical miles down range. Mark, five minutes, standing by now for Prestamico. Challenger Houston, press to Miko. Roger, press. Roger, proceed. Five minutes, ten seconds. A press to Miko. A call from Capcom. Machine. That sounds great, Grip. The press to Miko call says should Challenger lose one engine, uh, press on, keep flying forward. Challenger's engines have enough energy to achieve normal altitude and velocity at cutoff. Five minutes, 30 seconds, Challenger 58 nautical miles in altitude, 260 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading uh, 13. Uh, Jack Lausma, um, do you want to review? Would you like to uh, review that? Uh, nation participating in one way or another. The West Germans have a lot of activity on board. That's correct. I think we misspoke uh, slightly. That was a Canadian satellite. Did I say Canadian? Uh, the Indian satellite will be on STS-8. Ah, I, I meant down. Canadian, of course, and Indonesian. Good pickup. And those uh, two satellites will be jettisoned from the Challenger. And the arm will be used to lift the satellite out of the cargo bay. It will drop it off, and the Challenger and the pallet will, the shuttle pallet, will fly side by side for a while, and then the arm will retrieve that pallet and bring it back on board. That's an important experiment, isn't it? That's very important. It's sort of a, our version of space tag, I guess you could call it. Space tag. Six minutes, 30 seconds, uh, Challenger now. And on future flights, I imagine that arm will be used to retrieve uh, satellites that need some repair work. In fact, on STS-13, we're playing a uh, recovery of a, an alien satellite in space. That should be one of the most exciting missions that we have coming up. Challenger 58 nautical miles in altitude, 422 nautical miles down range. It took only 64 days to get the Challenger ready for its second flight. It's the uh, quickest turnaround so far. Seven minutes. Uh, the previous by now for single fastest turnaround was 82 days. Quite a difference. We'll be coming up pretty soon on uh, 3G throttling. Uh, th three Challenger Gs, three times the acceleration of gravity, is uh, the highest G-forces that will be experienced by the crew on ascent, and the engines will be throttled back at that point. They'll be coming up pretty soon. We talked a lot about the first woman astronaut to fly aboard an American spacecraft. It comes 20 years and a few days after the Soviets put a woman in space for the very first time, Valentina Tereshkova. I think one thing that should be noted about Sally is that she was the first astronaut, I think, in the world that was selected solely upon her qualifications competing against men. And uh, I think that that is a milestone. The first uh, black astronaut to fly on American spacecraft will fly on the very next flight. That's correct. The eighth shuttle flight by Bluford, Jr., the United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. Just a few moments, we're coming up to main engine cutoff.
Miko, it's gone. Mark, 8 minutes, 10 seconds, Challenger 59 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 690 nautical miles downrange. And that big external tank will be jettisoned free. That will not be recovered. It breaks up as it falls back toward the Indian Ocean. We have Miko and uh, external tank separation will take place about 18 seconds later. Confirm shutdown. Uh, Challenger has delivered to space the largest human payload in the history of mankind. Four men, one woman. Roger, sir. Roger, sir. It has separated. 8 minutes, separated. 44 seconds. Confirm external tank separation. And that's what it looked like on one of the earlier Eight minutes, 50 shuttle seconds. Challenger now performing an evasive maneuver, moving below and uh, beyond the external tank. Go, no, go. Status check and mission control by Flight Director Jay Green uh, for the first Ohms burn and shutting down the auxiliary power units. Uh, 